Okay. Here we are in the Bears Hall of Discipline. Ready to uh, have a spiritual bodybuilding session in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a spiritual bodybuilding mamma jamma. I mean, he was he was tough. He was to the point, and he obeyed the Lord through thick and thin. Ezekiel is a married man. During his ministry, his wife was taken from him. Um, he was carted off with all the evil people in his land to a foreign nation to suffer as they suffered. Um, he suffered wrongfully. He didn't, he didn't do anything wrong. It was the children of Israel that were uh, practicing their pagan religious beliefs. Um, and yet they knew the knowledge of the truth, but they made their choices. They wanted to be part of the society. Uh, they wanted to be part of the clubs. Um, so they chose their pagan beliefs and neglected the truth. Um, to this day, um, they have some of the very similar um, attitudes in the nation of Israel as they did during this time period. And that is a declaration of the evil heart of man. It just goes from one generation to the next, and each generation has to make their own choice. Our generation here, they've made some bad choices, but some good choices. And But what really matters is the choices that we make, because that makes us who we are. God reaches out and loves us, but if we don't make the choice to, number one, believe in him, have faith in him, obey him, trust him, exercise repentance because of him, because we love him. If you don't do those things, that choice, that's one movement. I said a lot of things, but really, and there's more attributes to that faith, to that belief. There's more attributes to that, but really that's it's one movement. It's putting your faith and your trust in God. And it's, it, you know, it, it has aspects of repentance and contrition. It has aspects of praise, obedience, trust, all those things. But it's, it's one movement. It's one choice. And there's like your job. You know, your job is I go to work and I do this. But you do many things at your job. And as a Christian, there's many attributes to being a disciple of Christ. Okay, enough tune of the flap, right? Let's move on to Ezekiel and hear what this man has been shown um, from God on high. Then I looked, and there above the expanse, over the heads of the cherubim, was something like sapphire stone, resembling the shape of a throne that appeared above them, and the Lord spoke to the man clothed in linen and said, Go inside the wheelwork beneath the cherubim, fill your hands with hot coals from amongst the cherubim and scatter them over the city. So I went in as I watched. We left off last time with God's judgment in the spiritual realm, in the futuristic realm, God is one of the few people that, you know, there's a lot of movies and TV shows and, you know, attitudes and Scientology and um, physics. Can you leap forward in time? Can you look back in time and see things that have happened because they generated images that went off into the universe? Can you capture that? I mean, there's that type of think the only person that can do that is our father Yahweh and and Jesus shows us that sometimes and he is showing Ezekiel this last time there was a judgment they were going through uh, Jerusalem um, batter batter ramming 
you know, the guilty, the wicked, men, women, and children, because of their wicked hearts. And we're picking off in the spiritual realm here, and we're moving to the heavenly scene, where we see angels, and we see the, the wheels that we talked about before, that were full of eyes. And let's move on with the story, and we'll talk about the angelic beings, the cherubim. Now the cherubim were standing to the south of the temple when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Then the glory of the Lord rose from above the cherubim to the threshold of the temple, and the temple was filled with the cloud, and the court was filled with the brightness of the Lord and with the brightness of his glory. The sound of the cherubim's wings could be heard as far as the outer court, it was like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. The cherubim, and we had a, we were getting acquainted with them. There were these really cool beings that had four faces. They had wings, and they had these wheels on the ground next to them. They had these little huge gyroscope kind of things that were all filled with eyes. And that's either in the physical sense or in the uh, the preceptory sense, you know, kind of like, like a bee or a fly. You know, they, um, you ever notice that a bee or a fly, when they take off, they don't do like a helicopter. They got to spin and kind of tip in the direction they're going and they take off. A fly, you ever try to slap a fly on your, on your lap or on your leg, then babies can fly sideways and, and bees can do kind of the same thing. And these creatures are, have those aspects and much more magnificent, obviously, than something from the animal kingdom or the bug kingdom, but they're magnificent and they have eyes from head to toe. And that could be they literally do have eyes or it's just their preceptory, their knowledge, they're all knowing all around them what's happening. In either case, you can bet when we get to heaven, they're going to be fantastically beautiful. Okay, we move on. After the Lord commanded the man clothed in linen, saying, Take fire from inside the wheel works from amongst the cherubim. The man went in and stood beside a wheel. Then one of the cherubim reached out his hand to the fire that was amongst them, and he took some and put it into the hands of the man clothed in linen, who took it and went out. And the cherubim to appear to have the form of human hands under their wings. So they have some human-like um, uh, aspects, but also they have angelic and multi-creature functionality. They're, they're going to be awesome. Um, uh, they, as well as many I want to say millions of other things I can't wait to see in the heavens when we're with the Lord Jesus and all the saints as seeing these beautiful creatures. Because if God made it, you know it's beautiful. If you have a handicapped child out there and you wish to yourself, I wish my child could have been thus and thus. Let me tell you something. If he made him in some attribute in his or her life, that child is beautiful. Their mind, their gifts, their thoughts, their speech, their love, that child is beautiful. I looked, and there were four wheels beside the cherubim. One wheel beside each cherubim, the luster of the wheels was like the gleam of beryl in appearance. All four had the same form, like a wheel within a wheel. When they moved, they would go in any of the four directions without pivoting or pointing as they moved. But wherever the head faced, they would go in in that direction without pivoting as they went. Their entire bodies, including their backs, hands, wings, and the wheels that had four of them, they were full of eyes all around. As I listened, the wheels 
were called the wheel work. Each one had four cherub, the second that of a man, the third of that of a lion, and the fourth of an eagle. Now these four faces on the creatures, we think, you know, that's, we kind of put them on a box, right? A box with a face on each side, but I don't really think that's how it is. But whatever it is, it's going to be majestic and beautiful, an angelic being, a man, a lion, and an eagle. That's going to be beautiful. You'll see. Verse 15, the cherubim ascended. These were the living creatures I had seen by the Kibar Canal. When the cherubim moved, the wheels moved beside them, and when they lifted their wings to rise from the earth, even then the wheels did not veer away from them. So the wheels were connected to them, and as we found out earlier, the wheels, the personage of the, the cherubs was actually in the wheels, in the wheels and the cherub. They were, they were connected spiritually, emotionally. Um, how? We don't know, but they were. When the cherubim stood still, when the cherubim stood still, the wheels stood still. And when they ascended, the wheels ascended with them, for the spirit of the living creatures was in them. Then the glory of the Lord moved away from the threshold of the temple and stood above the cherubim. The cherubim lifted their wings and ascended from the earth right before my eyes. They were wheels, wheels within a wheel were beside them as they went, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them, and it stood at the entrance of the eastern gate of the Lord's house. These were the living creatures I had seen beneath the God of Israel by the Kibar Canal, and I recognized that they were cherubim, each had the four faces, each had four wings with the form of human hands under their wings, and their faces looked like the same faces I had seen by the Kibar Canal. Each creature went straight ahead. Now he made reference to, we had an introduction to these um, angelic beings earlier, and the, they're, they are similar. They're either, they're either identical or they're similar. That God has different sets of um, throne room angelic beings, and they're just slightly different. Like one maybe kind of might seem like it has six wings. One has then four wings later, the different, same set of them. They're either the same represented something in, in a different aspect, or he has different sets of cherubim that are uh, ministering to him, and that would make sense. I mean, if I was a president or a, a, a ruler of a land, I would have different set, sets of the palace guard rotating in and out so they can have their own lives, you know, so they can be happy in their job. Pay him well, treat him well, and and they'll be like a son to you. And, and uh, these angelic beings, you know, most certainly they, there was a rotation probably. But, you know, angelics don't get tired and they don't have families. So I don't really know if that would apply, but just a thought there. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 10. Ezekiel talks about a lot of magnificence that we can't really appreciate. But do the best you can, and we're going to make the best we can and go through this very awesome prophetic book. So from Knut and I... We wish all of you Godspeed.